Hey everyone, welcome back for one final fight in Sinner, Sacrifice for Redemption. We've defeated all seven avatars of Sin, and I hope you've been keeping up with the complex lore that's developed over the course of this game, by which I mean absolutely none. We're finally going to go and check out that rock that rose up in the center of the platform as I clumsily tumble off one final ledge. I still can't interact with that spirit in any way, so let's just go right into the fight. And I'm sure the spirit fading out of the background was supposed to be meaningful in some way, but I still don't know who that is. But here we are, in an area where that very same stone seems to be raining something in the center of the arena. Whatever it is, it doesn't affect anything as far as I can tell. And this is Adam the Forsaken. And that is Adam's full combo. You can parry and repost Adam. You kinda have to. That's about the only way to do any meaningful amount of damage. And he's got a lot of really annoying attacks. Like lightning magic. Now I think this is supposed to be our character, like from the beginning of the game with all the powers that we've given up. We never had lightning magic. I mean, otherwise, he's got a lot of stuff that's very similar to the stuff that we had. But, you know, we never got a lightning sword. I just wasn't going to get anywhere that time. Because you have to make every sacrifice before you get here, your healing is always going to be limited to five heals that are slow, and you don't have auto-regen. Your offense and defense are both low, you're going to get exhausted if you dodge too much. I'm going to switch to the Greatsword, because I'm pretty sure the damage that it does is a little bit better. And just because this is the way I'm used to doing the fight. The increased reach is a big benefit because he doesn't stand still long enough for you to attack him very often. And some of the moves that he does are just awful to try to dodge. Like that. He'll jump across most of the arena and he'll stab you. I would have expected to have gotten hit by at least one of those, because the dodging in this fight doesn't seem to work as well as it should. Well, it'll do little bits of chip damage here and there. Actually get out of the way of the sparks this time. I don't know where he's going, but... Tried to do another thing I've seen some people on YouTube do. Apparently if you run an attack, there's actually kind of a jumping stab that you can do. And that, I figure, will be a lot more suited to this fight, if I can work out how to do it. Yeah, parrying is really the only way to handle most of what he does. There's the jumping attack. I really should not have done that. And now he switches to a greatsword, and at this point, you cannot parry him. I've tried. I never managed to do it the first time I went through the fight. I'll try it here again pretty soon. Yeah, once I give up on a particular attempt and recognize there's no way I'm going to beat him, I'll just try to get some parries in. He can parry me. I can't parry him. Here I am trying. That was probably way too early for parry timing, but that was spot on. And the parry timing in this game is surprisingly generous. 
If you're anywhere close, it should give it to you, and it never does. If I ever find a video of someone managing to successfully parry his greatsword, maybe I'll update and let you know, but I am convinced that it's impossible. He's also got the lightning javelins. And really, you just cannot attack him from the front, whatever you do. He will parry you every time. Even if he's in the middle of an attack, you can't parry in the middle of an attack, but he can, and always does. See, there you go. I don't know whether maybe there's just that much input delay that the game knows the attack is coming and goes into parry animation that early, but it really looks like he's in the middle of an attack when I do that. And here. I mean, he had to be attacking me. And there's a parry. And I survived it for a second time, but I don't get a chance to heal. I figured I'd give the parrying thing one more try with the Blades of Gluttony. Maybe somehow the timing is different, and that's one thing that I didn't have the first time through. But I didn't really get very many chances to try it. So I'm just giving up on that entirely. And he can parry you with his shield. He just doesn't nearly as often. So that's really the way you gotta do it. Dodge, wait until he's in his attack animation, and then swing at him, and hope he's close enough to hit. And that was just my screw up. He was obviously using the lightning. So here we go again. And I know looking at the video timestamp, you're probably figuring, this is another one of those ones where I just show you the full fight and then I die at the end. No, this is actually the successful run. It takes that long. As you can see, there is nothing wrong with my parry timing. This is the pattern you really want to go for at the start. Don't let him use any other attacks, just take those sword swings and parry over and over again. I was way early on that one, and it still gave it to me. I mean, yeah, I know I'm going to be going on and on about this, but... What kind of game doesn't let you parry? And I've tried it with the sword and shield. That's not the issue. He can even parry my lightning javelins. I'm not going to attempt that myself. I think the best strategy for this part of the fight is to remain at a distance, kind of force him to come in with those long range attacks of his, and dodge out of the way there, and only go for one attack. I mean, maybe you might be able to get a second strike in, but in my experience he will always parry the second hit. That was just really awful on my part but I think we're a good way into the fight for me to be making my first major mistake. I didn't even see whether he did any damage to me with that kick. It might be that I actually pulled one off. I don't think I was trying to parry there. I don't know what I was doing. Yeah, most of the time, even when you've actually got a good opportunity to attack, he dodges. And then I went for a running attack there, and my run button didn't work. That one did, and I don't know what happened. I think it would probably be a bad idea to attempt to replicate that one. And I also don't know what exactly this charge-up move is. It seems like maybe when he does that, he's more likely to parry. But now it's finally actually his desperation mode. Here, he sets his sword and his armor on fire. And believe it or not, I think from this point, the fight is a lot easier. If you can make it here, you're in good shape. 
you just have to watch because when his armor burns up like that, it explodes, and if he's too close, it will damage you. And it'll also leave you open for further attacks, so, you know, get blown up, and then get a face full of sword. Not a good combination. But really, you just kinda dodge into his attacks, try to get behind him, get in those swings when you can. And he does at least leave himself wide open after a lot of his combos. I'm very surprised that I didn't get exhausted just then. So stamina management is a big thing, but you also have to watch your timing. Don't get too close when his armor starts to burn, or you might get blown up. There it went off mid-jump, which is good for me. And yeah, I'm gonna get greedy, I'm gonna try to get in swings whenever I can. Just because I don't want this fight to go on any longer than it absolutely has to. That was a bad move, and I paid for it. But I got some healing left. And you don't have to be shy about using it. If you get the opportunity, just go for it. I, I, I don't know what happened there. I think I knocked him out of the air and lost my lock on. So, of course, you got to get that back so I can see what he's doing. And that's the end of my healing. So the health I've got is what I've got. But I'm in really good shape this time. Barely dodging these attacks, but that is mostly good enough. Getting very careless here, but we're both on our last legs. I think one more hit and we'll be about even in the damage race. It's all about keeping up your nerve, not making stupid mistakes just because it doesn't seem like you've got a chance. That was a mistake, but it paid off. And of course, being able to endure the awful heartbeat that is going to persist for the rest of the fight until one of us dies. So, don't get clumsy. Don't dodge into his attack. Don't get exhausted. I'm just giving up and throwing javelins at him. And I caught him mid-explosion. Take that, Adam. And hey, look, there's a cutscene that actually plays the second time through. the world by taking every sin into himself. Their sins are mine now. I bear this punishment alone. And there you have it. That's the style of cutscenes that originally introduced the bosses. And that's the end of the game. That's everything there is to it. And I don't know whether there was supposed to be something significant about that ending. It's basically just telling us exactly what we did all along. Beat all the bosses, redeem all the sins. Again, it might be more impactful if I knew who any of these characters were, if they were characters. 
I mean, granted, say the protagonist of Dark Souls doesn't have a character as such, but there are a lot of other people in the game who do. It's kind of a living, vibrant world. This one, the opening story, just kind of gives you... Everybody forgets what happened. Done. That's your world. And the reward for beating the game a second time? Absolutely nothing. We come right back to the title screen. We can play through the game yet again. I really don't feel like it. There is a challenge mode in the game, so I'll probably throw up a bonus video of me doing some of that. And until then, I'll see you around for hopefully a better game next time.